Thank you everybody for joining us with Alice B. Fogel um, presenting her new book, Nothing But. Alice served as the New Hampshire Poet Laureate from 2014 through 2019. Her latest poetry collection is Nothing But, a series of poems responding to abstract expressionist art and its effect on our consciousness. Two of her previous books are Doubtful House and Interval, poems based on Box Goldberg Variations, which won the Nicholas Schaffner Award for Music and Literature and the 2016 New Hampshire Literature Award in Poetry. A recipient of a National Endowment for the Arts Fellowship, among other awards, she is also the author of Strange Terrain on how to appreciate poetry even if you don't get it. She works one-on-one -on -one with students and learn with learning differences at Landmark College in Putney, Vermont, and hikes mountains whenever possible. If you would like to purchase the book, we are providing you a link in the chat room, so that way you can get it directly from your indie bookstore. And the floor is yours. All right, thank you. Um, there are some glitches in the internet, I think, because of the weather. So hopefully this won't come out sounding even more difficult than it's already gonna be. Um, so thank you everybody for coming. Um, I'm gonna um, share my screen pretty soon, but I just wanna say that uh, I'm gonna try to explain what I was doing in this writing project and I'll read some poems and each of the poems is uh, inspired or almost everyone is inspired by a, an individual work of abstract expressionist painting. Uh, most of them are paintings, there's a few other things. Um, and I have some of those um, in visual so, so that you can see what they look like. Um, I don't have all of them. So, um, Please feel free to stop me after each, after a poem. Anytime I'm done reading a poem, you can interrupt and you can ask me questions or you know give me any comments or anything or not as you wish. Um, and then I'll ask again at the end if there's any questions. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen and just show you what the cover looks like. Can you see this, the cover? Okay, so um, this painting is by Robin Tedesco, who um, does a lot with um, encaustic and this, this kind of lit uh, textury um, colors that are very abstract, but they either end up looking like something cosmic, you know, like maybe something that was taken um, by a satellite out in space or a spaceship or something, or they sometimes look like something that was dug up out of the ground. And these are um, the kinds of artwork that I really respond to. And so what I was trying to do in this um, project was um, I wanted to express a kind of gratitude for this sort of art that that makes you stop in your tracks and and just be bewildered because so much of our lives is so um so logical and linear and i love these opportunities to just stop the stream of consciousness for a moment and not be able to explain what i'm seeing so um, when I was looking for paintings to um, be inspired by to write these poems, if I looked at the painting and I said, oh, that looks like a tree or that looks like a landscape, um, I wouldn't use that because I wanted to look at it and say, I have no idea what that is. Um, and to see the color and the texture and the light, um, the darkness, the, all of that. Um, so Robin Tedesco is one of the artists who um, I will read something um, connected to tonight. And um, so um, I try to vary the artwork somewhat too, and sometimes have things that are a little more whimsical or geometric, different, different kinds of things like that. Um, so I'm gonna 
change what I'm sharing and put up another document so you can see what the poems look like as well. So let's see, get this where I can see it better. Sorry, I just need to move this. Here we go. Um, are you looking at this, um, some of this painting and then it says poems and art from nothing but? Okay. Um, so there's a quote here that I, I want to read um, from William James who wrote The Stream of Consciousness in 1892. He says, consciousness is in constant change, a series of indirect considerations the only breaches that can well be conceived to occur within the limits of a single mind would be interruptions, time gaps during which the consciousness went out. And that's kind of what this book is playing with. And it is actually pretty playful um, for the most part, although there are some also some you know really serious thoughts about what is consciousness. And it's written in first person plural, kind of like the collective conscious. Um, this particular painting is probably my favorite amongst the ones that I worked with. It's also encaustic and it's by Martha Rhea Baker, who um, exhibits in Santa Fe. I'm just going to read a couple and then I'll talk a little bit more about what's going on. So, um, I can't get full size paintings, but just so you can kind of see what's going on in this painting by Kathy Burge called Torsion. I played off of their titles too, when I, I would um, just use letters from their title or change the words around from the title. And that would also kind of inspire um, where the poem might go. So I'm gonna show you what the poems look like on the page. Um, they're in frames mostly, they're spread out in the, on the page in the frame, like a piece of artwork, like um, brush strokes. Um, and I'm gonna try to read so that you'll hear some of that spacing. This one is called Torn. We have to love and admit that there isn't always a story, though surely a story could stumble out of here unrecognizing as a wanderer from a blizzard, snow blind, who dies otherwise within sight of his home. Surely the out of focus plots an ambivalent arc, a physics of light and ice in which figure the twisted and turned, testaments of glint and sheen, a green whose green is not rhetorical, a white that is everything but, autobiography, in truth, is absorbing, builds suspense, tells what else, and if and then and again, subtle hints, we rough in like concrete. Attention unwinds us like a tale. We see now what follows us inside, why our eyes hurt when we look away. So if you look at this picture, you can see where I'm seeing kind of maybe a blizzard, um, some green, the twisting, but those are really abstract um, messages that I'm getting from this painting. I'm not trying to explain the painting. I'm not trying to describe it. I'm just using things that come to me to, um, to think about in, in this particular one, narrative versus abstraction and vision. The 
This is another Robin Tedesco piece. She often does things in um, sections. And in fact, the cover of Nothing But is, is a diptych. It has a two, two parts and one's on the back, one's on the front. This one has five parts. Um, so I put it into five boxes. <laughs> um, her title was Your Eyes Adjust to the Dark and I called it You'll Adjust. So in this one, I'm, um, I'm really thinking about what the effect is of, of seeing this kind of artwork. Sometimes I'm really addressing that um, the effect of artwork directly in, in these poems. And other times I'm thinking more about consciousness. And as the book goes on, it starts to build up a kind of conversation about um, consciousness and what, what we perceive. You'll adjust. <clears throat> Where are you going? Stay with us, stay awake. Don't go making inroads or assumptions. Use the map provided. Where are you going to look it up? It's all ridge, all whirlpool, no sub -clause. We can't even begin to describe how it moves all the time. It acts like it's still. Where would you go if it's time out of mind, a kind of temporal immortality to paint and more paint, to almost taste it when you try to speak through a crack in the reasoning to what hinges, what sieves the mirrored valley as peered at from above, how far down it goes, how deep the definition, its fact, the leap. Don't go to geology, to ledge. Just go to the level of paint. It shouldn't even be possible to refuse what you see. I don't have the artwork for this next one. Um, yeah. So, and, and really the artwork shouldn't even, I mean, I show it because I love it and I just want you to appreciate it too. But it's really, the poems don't need the artwork. Um, they, they were really just my triggers to, to think about um, our realities and our consciousness. And um, I see these paintings as that what they do to me is really, a, it's a spiritual thing. It, it, it transports me. And it's a kind of transportation that I um, crave. I want, I want this kind of thing, just the way it's almost the same as what I get when I'm when I'm hiking and I'm out in, in the woods and I'm just surrounded by um, plants and, and mostly unseen animals and just um, the natural world. And it, it takes me out of that logical um, commercial kind of world that I have to function in most of the rest of the time. Um, so I'm... Um, I'm depending on the artwork to inspire me, but the poems themselves can, can work without them and kind of create their own, their own piece of art, hopefully. Some place. If it was the true world, we could never live here. We could never survive our own anxieties. But because it's only an actual, for a while, we can. Still, it throws us to go all devoid of ourselves and thoughts like that. As long as we keep winning, we cast our votes for our own oligarchy, saying we'd be crazy not to. But sometimes, secretly, don't we ask, when I don't think, am I 
not. And look at the glorious forms we can change, we claim, or we can love making up everything as we go, clinging to whether patterns make or break us. How literal is that thing we undermine here? Is what we fear afraid of us? We are hungry and we have imaginary friends, good ones. We haven't come yet to the point where we lose our patience with the trivial, the black and white, anything but the throes of decency and meaning. Okay, we aren't hungry now, but we will be, we think. I just wanna stop for a second and just see if anybody has a question or um, anything that would be helpful. And you can um, raise your hand or you can um, use one of the little buttons to raise a, a fake hand <laughs> if you're not on screen or you can use the chat box. And Elise can tell me if you're writing something. I'll just stop for a second. Okay, I'll just continue then. Um, so this, this little thumbnail of the painting called Black and Blues by Ellen Raleigh, um, if I try to blow it up, it just goes, it, get, it gets um, really pixelated, so it, it doesn't work. But you can see that um, the blues are pretty intense and solid looking blues. Because we're tired to death of blue, how it is forever, as if benignly suggestive of depths, of as if it had heft, infinitude, because it is always about some conceptual sky, as if there were virtue in beckoning the mortal to blame or abandon time. We want something more of blue, want a kind of blue that bears the limits of walls, a blue imbued with brazen bricks, flat, blackened and not beholden, to emptiness, contextual in its own frame. We want blue blurred, blue blatant, blues blunt and blared to bash our brain into. It's scarred substance, it's thick skin and heavy heart broken, horizoned, so much the matter of its own making and blindly self-referential like us, not even trying to, as if it could brush past the fact it's burden of blue. So every 10 or 12 or 15 poems in, through the book, there's one that's not in the frame there's a few that are not in the frame uh, otherwise, but they're still using that we because they are of pieces of artwork that were not framed. They were mobiles or, or hanging things or three-dimensional things. But these ones, um, I use the first person singular and these are really more me thinking about um, why I'm so obsessed with this kind of abstraction and how it connects me to consciousness and the questions of reality and mortality, what life is, what we are, who we are. Um, so these are slightly more personal in that sense. Of, I mean, of course, I mean, I've spent my life writing so many poems that avoid using myself being autobiographical or using the I. Um, although of course everything I write is about me too, because I can't help it. That's just what writers do. 
Um, but these are, are much more um, coming from my mind and my voice. They don't have titles. Pretend I asked the physicist and the mystic, what is the nature of reality? And they said, we cannot answer this question with answers. What if we were meant to ask the art galleries to arbitrate electromagnetic magnetic actions as they orbit an exact consciousness? One mind flirting with the sublime, one atmosphere tinged with hail and tornadoes. And what about the equations? Will we falter when they fail to be as elegant or worse yield only abstractions? Heavens, no, practical applications. Then will we consider under cover of mass and matter if in fact, whether in spirit we've obeyed or defied the given forces, what we've had are gravity's other favors. How what, we, what is set down can lift us anyway, upwards of ourselves. If we might have been capable of reaching entirely different conclusions. This is a somewhat pixelated, blown up version of a painting called Gray Matters One from a series of Gray Matters paintings by Ginny Thomas. Um, when I started looking at these paintings, I was, um, I was injured and I wasn't able to walk for a while. And I spent a lot of time online looking at art and it, it um, in between also spending some time online watching comedy, you know, like just comedy routines just to get myself to laugh and cheer myself up. But um, in between, I was doing this with, with the art and I found a lot of amazing art. Obviously it's not as great as seeing it in person in a gallery, which I did when I could. Um, and when I was working on this project, I began to write to some of these artists because I only have a, a few artists that I, used um, that I actually knew. Some were close friends, some were just friendly um, people I knew a little bit, but many of them were people I, had, I didn't know. And so I, I wrote to some of them and just told them what I was doing and began to have a correspondence with some of them, which was really exciting. Um, this woman um, also exhibits in Santa Fe. And when I was out there a couple of years ago, I got to see some of the, these um, artists in person and some of their work in person. So the poem of this plays with gray matters and uses the title Grave Matters. Because the thought is so like a body, a possible way to remember if we could climb would be to climb on the rough rocks of the sky. When our eyes get encrypted with cravings we can't depend on, the creviced scripts wet with blood and dew. Hold on, we're still thinking. The mind's dagger is a dagger, always there, the way the moon is there even when we can't see it or see it through our double vision. There is a light, but not that which is not heavy. Here is its shadow, a lit lamentation over loss. There is that. Gravity always falls away from it. Gravity is what freehand makes a perfect circle flattened to ellipse. What makes branches and birds wondrous. What makes the stab of sun for the vine, the opposite force of attraction. Will we ever wake up in the undreaming without want, body cut loose from mind? Half the time we fall for half the time because it's less solace than it is 
effort toward happiness is why we climb. There's a lot of stuff about physics in, in these poems. Um, the, the efforts of mathematicians and physicists to understand what reality is figures in, um, in kind of an almost equal balance with um, philosophers and um, spiritual figures also trying to make sense of those things. Um, I find the two overlap very much anyway in my sensibilities. Um, and this, there's also this reference here about the mind's dagger is a dagger. That's from Macbeth. Um, and Shakespeare is, you know, saying that that when we imagine something, it's it's as as it's almost it is reality. Because I mean, we all know the experience of when you you think of something, you're sitting by yourself and you think of something and you start to feel anxiety because of a memory that you're getting, or sometimes you, you start to laugh because a memory has re-embodied itself in you and um, given you that, that sense as if it's happening right now. Um, so even just the imagination creates a reality that affects us physically. And so there's, there's overlap. So here we are um, maybe getting into more of the religious or spiritual um, parts. Still today, oh, this is called Undone. Still today, blinded at the crossroads, the desert monks might recognize for what it is, another impenetrable prayer. Inside the hot tents of their robes, the melting candles of their bodies promise. There is nothing that isn't abstraction. Once we are maddened enough, wicked flames in risen heat smolder, invisible as their skin, released under their own cognizance, ardent and losing patience, they might with only a flicker of irony decide that all answers are the answers to all questions, or that it's legit if the redemptive blip is subtle, a pitched pebble to the skull, that we want it to be a holy conflagration, its bright streaks arcing in the dark, a breakage in the act of happening every time we don't look again. We just have a couple more. Um, this one is called Absence of Here. And I, I think that it, I often play around with um, pronouns, but I think that it is really talking about absence. Um, maybe absence of, so the, you know, the title of the book being nothing but I think that you know people talk about um, abstraction versus representational art, and um, when we talk about rep representational art, we're talking about something that looks like something, you know, a person or a a room or the objects in a room, a still life, a landscape. Um, but I think that this these abstract expressionist works um, do represent something. They represent the nothingness that it is nothing but nothing. It is something. It's just that we don't understand it and that we, uh, we perceive it, we experience it. We just don't have the, um, we don't always have the language for it. And so, so these poems are trying to kind of do almost that same thing, except that it's trying to use language to represent the that kind of nothingness and the lack of um, concrete 
reality objects, things to ground us in that way. Um, all right, I'll just read this one, absence of here. It bleeds through like tinted walls beyond a fog. It's a rune for art, the unreachable part between rows knit in ashes bark. When we heard in God's image, we could not but for mirrors see what might be, that it might be this. Now, what if we could empty to it, take it down out of awe and abstract, a vow of doubt, that we might always follow the gauze weave of its curtain, its fold and fray, because it is so useful, this useless grace of material that sources the interrogative trace of the code for the thing itself, the precision of its teeth, such thingness, that absence that bleeds through. By the truth of its own authority, this laying on of hands makes palpable the infinite field of consciousness on a four-cornered board, the longing we bring to it, the dream we have of it, the fingerprints we leave on it after we probe in our sleep its flesh and blood. So this will be the last one uh, that I'll read and hopefully we, we can talk a little bit. It's called Full of Life. When we say, when I leave this earth, we mean when I leave this place I am and try to find anywhere where there are no unmarked graves. We keep thinking we're seeing where maybe there are none, shades of condensation, the old horizontals where fresh verticals of dirt scrape away to granite and glare. A kind of feral dusting of lichen coats the history of the ones buried in a hurry and left. Now we can't help but doubt and double back make new assumptions about old assumptions, take on purpose everything personally, and then we just want to cry. If we knew what makes us conscious, if it was of Adam or of Adam, if particle or God, would that change our minds? Every time we try, we try to give up the ghost of gravity. We get so unbalanced, we're ashamed. And what are our options? Go down under humus like a seed or be lifted into air by heat. We're afraid to tilt beyond the painted limits of the frame. We have a feeling we are the frame. Thank you, thank you for listening. Um, please unmute yourself and ask me, talk to me, is there anything um, that's coming up? Happy to entertain some thoughts and questions. I was going to say, Alice, the last, the very last poem is, oh, so I, I, I couldn't imagine putting those feelings into words, but that is very much the essence of the, the conundrum of life and death, isn't it? what happens, where do we go, seed or 
errands. Beautiful, beautiful poem. Thank yeah. you. Congratulations, Alice. And 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 your reading as always is yeah. really wonderful. Thank you. Thanks. Could you read the part right before we have a feeling we are the frame? Again. Um, yeah, let me, let me get to it. Um, let's see. Let's see. Every time we try, we try to give up the ghost of gravity. We get so unbalanced, we're ashamed. And what are our options? Go down under humus like a seed or be lifted into air by heat. We're afraid to tilt beyond the painted limits of the frame. We have a feeling we are the frame. It's such a wonderful encapsulation of, I think, the whole book and the, the framing of things and the questioning about where our framing and, and our lack of a frame, I'm not being very coherent, but something about that just is very thrilling. I mean, these aren't easy poems to hear because there's so <laughs> much, there's so much um, um, almost difficult to put into words things you're talking about that you're actually talking about. So it's, um, it's exciting and challenging. Mm, thank you. And true. We do have the feeling we are the frame. That's the whole problem. We can't imagine there being no frame. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't even know where these poems come from. You know, when I, when I look at them, I just, I don't even know where they came from. But I think that, you know, really using the art in that way to transport myself um, just puts my mind in another sort of like a trance state that kind of tries to reach for the words to to put things into words that we can't put into words. And that's why, I mean, the poems are, they, they may have some concrete items in them here and there, but they're pretty abstract and they're and they're challenging. I know they are. I think one of the I, I'm I think the poems are tremendous um, and so provocative in so many ways, Alice. And I one of the things that amazes me is your process that you took us from the canvas to the uh, kind of intellectual um, examination of the ideas of the canvas, and but then you get to the emotion, and that process of going from the, the concrete to the consciousness. And then if we're listening carefully to the emotion um, that really shapes the consciousness and, and provokes the question, um, that process is amazing to me. And, I, and you did that with music in your one of your, one of your former books, and now you're doing it with art. And I'm just stunned at how um, skillful that process is. It's it's truly one of your signature, feels to me like it's one of your signature uh, um, kind of skills and talents that you take us from the abstract and the intellectual into the emotional. Uh, and it that's quite a journey. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know, I worked on this book for a long time before it even occurred to me that I was kind of doing the same thing that I had done with the music. Mm. It, I just hadn't just hadn't thought of it that way. Uh, well, yeah. Will the will the um, artists uh, receive your book? Will you? Do you hope to talk to them? I let them know when when I um, was told that I had a publisher, you know, when the publisher said that they would publish this book, I let them all know that this was happening. And the ones who wrote back, I sent them the poems that went with their artwork, you know, told them which piece of art I had used. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still, like just the other day, I heard from one um, who had just finally found my message to her. Um, and, you know, for the most part, they're kind of excited about it. They seem really open to it, and you know everybody likes it when their when their work is appreciated in some way. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if the I'm not sending them a copy of the mm -hmm. book, 
Um, but and, they will read the, yeah, I, it would be so interesting if one of them would tell you, as you explained to us, your, your kind of inspiration to write the poem, it would be very neat if you would ever hear from one of them how they felt when they made the painting ah. the piece of art. They might say, I don't know where this comes from. I yeah. mean, they- like, It would be, I just think it would be a yeah. kind of thing, yeah. I mean, I do have some close friends who are artists and we have those conversations. Where, where does it come from? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of times we end up um, talking about it after the fact, as if we knew before the fact when we really didn't. We can mm -hmm. interpret, um, you know, I'm making this art because I want to honor, that it has this feather shapes in them because I want to honor the birds that are going extinct. And then you can build a whole sense of meaning around, and I'm just talking about a friend of mine who's one of the artists in there actually. <laughs> and you can create this whole um, world of explanation that might draw people in who wouldn't necessarily look at the abstract art because they're interested in birds. Um, but that's not really where it started. No, no. no. It's, it's fascinating. Thank you very much Thank for doing it. Thank you for coming. It's great to see you all. Oh, thank you thank so you, much. Alice. That's wonderful. Thank you. We can say goodbye. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> Unless you want to stay here, I'll stay. Stay warm, stay dry. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Everybody stay yeah. safe. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank, you. Bye. Thank, you. Bye. Thank you, Alice, so much. Thanks so I'm much. Good. Thank you, Toad Stool. You're welcome. I, I, I'm still muted. No, I look forward to, to reading, the, going back and reading those poems again when I get the book. Yeah, uh, send me an email. Send me an email. You have my email. You bet I will. It's good to see you. Yeah, like bye bye. Congratulations. <laughs>